Well, let's start. Um, if you get out your study guide, and again, I'll print this up for you. I'll put a PDF copy online as well, and hopefully the YouTube video will all work and all that, blah, 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 blah. Are there any questions from the study guide, first of all, that you're wanting me to go over? So, sensing some of you haven't yet tackled the study guide, I have a copy right here. So, on the test, either as a multiple choice or a written, one of the things that kids are having trouble with is they're having trouble coming up with names of compounds with Roman numerals. Okay? So, here's an example uh, from number one. I'll let you try these on your own. Instead, I'm going to make up one kind of similar to this. So, I'm going to say here, uh, Let's go uh, formula, name. Oh, don't do that, Mr. Duick. Hit enter. But I want to make this way bigger. And I want to make this way bigger. Okay. Um, some examples. So supposing you have, and I'm trying to do these in my head, so hopefully I'll get these correct. Uh, supposing you have... Uh, that. Ionic or covalent, and how do you know? Covalent. Convince me. It's a, a, yeah. a non-metal. What's iron? A metal. So covalent or ionic? Oh, ionic. Ionic. Nothing to do with oxygen. Everything to do with iron as a metal. Okay? Definitely. Now, Normally, if iron, can you find iron on your periodic table? What's yucky about iron? It's multivalent. If it wasn't multivalent, the name would be, but the fact that it's multivalent means there's going to be some kind of Roman numeral dealie. I have to figure out what charge was required. It's going to be iron something oxide. You'll notice what I'm not using is the mono, tri, tetra. That's for covalent, which is why I ask myself whenever they give me a formula, hey, ionic or covalent, I want to figure that out. How do I know ionic? First thing is that the first uh, chemical is going to be a metal. First element is going to be a metal, the left side of your periodic table. So how do I figure out the charge, the Roman numeral? Well, I have to un- crisscross. What number in my formula here is sitting beneath the iron? An invisible one. So if I uncrisscross, I think maybe this was that. What number is sitting right here? It's invisible. It's plus one. So at first you might think, oh, it's that. Now here's the problem. Here's how I check to see what my Roman numeral is. I look at oxygen, because oxygen is not multivalent. What's oxygen's charge on your periodic table? Go find it. What have I suggested it was? One negative. What is it really? So you know what? It must have been two negative. I times it by two. This must have been 2 plus, I times it by 2. This must have been iron 2 oxide. Oh, and by the way, you don't need the brackets there, so I guess I should delete the brackets. Because otherwise kids will do that. Is that okay, Sage? The reason is, by the way, when you crisscrossed, you got a 2 there and a 2 there, and then you reduced, and so you lost a factor, and you didn't realize that's what we started with. So I'm going to give you some like that, either multiple choice or written, where I'm going to give you a formula. Uh, how about come here, pen? Click. I'm losing my pen here. There we go. Uh, how about uh, change colors? Ionic or covalent? Um, is that right? I think that's right, yep. Ionic, so it's going to be uh, something blank chloride. 
right? Okay, Taylor, you can go. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's going to be copper. Is copper multivalent or not? Look, up, find it on your periodic table. Taylor, you shut the door behind you, dear. Thank you. Ah, Roman numerals. Which one? I uncrisscross. So if I uncrisscross, I guess a two must have been there, and a one must have been there. And here's how I figure it out. Can Cl have a one? Can chlorine have a charge of one? Go find it. Sage is nodding, yeah. So copper, yes? Find it. But what is that negative? It's not a, just a negative. What number's always sitting there invisible? Okay, so can it have a charge of one? So what must the charge on copper have been? Okay, this is important. This is going to be probably on a test out of 71. This is probably going to be about 10 marks of it. So if you can't get this, you're throwing away marks. Do you see where the two came from, kiddo? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try another one. How about uh, what if it had been CuCl? Again, I would uncrisscross. I would say, okay, here's copper, here's chlorine. There used to be a one right there, I'll move it up. There used to be a one right there, I'll move it up. And again, the key is the non-metal because those are not multivalent, which means I can figure out what the other metal had to be. Can sage chlorine have a charge of one? I know it's negative, but yes. So you know what? Then copper had a charge of one, this would be Copper, one. Chloride. Actually, I think the brackets are usually written. Okay, let's try another one. Ionic or covalent? How do you know? You're right. Sorry? What's special about calcium? I'm looking for a word that begins with the letter M. I don't care about that. Why do you know it's ionic? Even more fundamental than that. Calcium is a metal. Okay? I didn't hear you. It's, sorry, my bad. So now, is it multivalent, Rylan? So you know what? No need to uncrisscross. You know what its name is? Calcium chloride. Also, I can give you the name and say, tell me the formula. So for example, I can give you, uh, oh heck, uh, nickel three oxide. I can give you nickel three oxide. What I'm seeing a lot of kids do is this. Oh, this is going to be Ni3O. No. No, 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 no. This number here does not tell you how many there are. It tells you, can you find nickel on your periodic table, please? Is nickel multivalent? Which charge do they want me to use when I crisscross? The three. So this is not correct. But off in the margin, this is why you kept hearing me say, I can't do these in my head. I've got to go write these off in the margin. Nickel, what charge do they want me to put here? Three plus. And then oxygen, what is oxygen's charge? Now, I crisscross. It's going to be Ni2O3. That is nickel three oxide. Oh, you know what else? Instead of nickel three oxide, I could have gone with nickel two oxide. Can nickel have a charge of two? Yep. 
Yep. By the way, the valence charges for the multivalent, those are the most common ones. There are other ones. So I think we noticed once or twice in the homework, they gave us a Roman numeral that didn't show up on the pink chart, but I said, just trust me, it, it can work. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go nickel. They want me to use a two plus. That's what the Roman numeral means, Alex. And oxygen I know is two minus. Hey, can you see when I crisscross what numbers are going to end up down there? Two and two and two. Am I going to leave it as two and two? Am I going to write this? Am I going to do that? Reduce. So that. Is that okay, Sage? Okay. That's really everything I can do with ionic. Oh, no, I haven't done polyatomic yet. So let's try some polyatomic. Ugh, I know. So what if I gave you, now in some ways they're tougher, in some ways they're easier. They're tougher in that I've, you've got to keep track of a lot. What if I gave you nickel three dichromate? Okay. I would say nickel multivalent. Oh, no, no, no. I know which one I'm supposed to use. Which charge am I supposed to put on the nickel? Dichromate. OK, that's not an element. That's polyatomic. I got to flip my periodic table over. I go find it. Alex, what's dichromate? What's its charge? So when I crisscross, Oh, what am I going to write? Ni what? 2? And then Cr2O7, all in brackets, 3. 3. I hope I'm not making actual test examples up, but there's only so many elements I can make up, so maybe I am. We'll find out. That's if I give you the uh, name, find the formula, or last one toughest one, I can give you the formula, find the name. Now, if it's ionic but not multivalent, it's not as tough. So I'm going to do one that's multivalent. Uh, let's see. How about I go with, uh, sure, Cu, uh, Uh, can I make one like that, Mr. Duick? Sorry, trying to do some quick math in my head here. Cu3PO42. By the way, how many coppers are there in that molecule? Three. Three. How many phosphorus are there in that molecule? Two. How many oxygens are there? Eight. See the eight? OK. Cu is copper. PO4 as a polyatomic ion is what? Copper, multivalent or not? Ah, if it wasn't, I'd be done. But it's multivalent. I need Roman numerals. How am I going to figure that out? I'm going to uncrisscross. So if I uncrisscross, that 2 from the phosphate ends up there, and 2 plus, and that PO4, uh, that 3 from the copper, was that, now go check, is PO4 3 negative? Please, God, let it be. Is it, is it, is it? Yes, then this works. What must the charge of copper have been? That's what they must have used to make this. Is that OK? This is tricky. This, is, this and balancing equations are the, by far the two toughest things in this whole unit in my mind. OK? Uh, hey. What about covalent? I'm going to argue easier. I'm going to argue easier. First of all, I can give you a formula. Now, you ready? Got your periodic table? 
I want to combine these two. I want to combine phosphorus, phosphorus, metal or non-metal? I want to combine phosphorus and sulfur. How? What's the charge on phosphorus? What's the charge on sulfur? Believe it or not, the crisscross rule still works. If you want to figure out how these will bond, it will be P2S3. So that still works. Ionic or covalent, and how do you know? How do you know? And you know what? In science 10, if we start with a non-metal, I'm not going to put the metal on the end to try and trap you or anything stupid like that. So covalent. Now, instead of the uh, Roman numerals, now I pull out the prefixes, which are also on the back on your pink sheet. What would I call this? Nope. Di phosphorus tri sulfide. Now, the reason covalent is nicer to go from the name, first of all, I clue in. If I see di, mono, penta, tri, covalent, and to go from the name to the formula, can you see the formula is really hidden in here? P with two of them, S with three of them. So if they gave me If they gave me, uh, let's make one that works, Mr. Duick. Mm, uh, mm. Let's go. Uh, nitrogen trichloride. Nitrogen trichloride. Okay. Covalent or ionic, and how do I know? How do I know with, even without the metal non-metal thing? How do I know? Try, yeah, okay. Covalent, and a lot of my students are wanting their prefix happy. They want to stick them everywhere. I had a bunch of kids today come and show me on their study guide for ionic. They were trying to call this one here uh, tri nickel. Sorry, di nickel tri oxide. No, 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 no. That's why I've been harping. What's the first thing I always ask myself? Ionic or covalent, and then make sure I know which rules go with which. So anyways, they gave me the name. OK. How many nitrogens are there? One. How many chlorides are there? So that's going from name to formula, formula to name. From your study guide, that's uh, question one. Now, if you had trouble with this, you might want to do maybe the odd letters, A and C. Question two, so here's going from formula to name, and these are all multivalent Roman numerals. Here's going from name to formula, which is, trick or, uh, which, which is easier in some ways. You're going to crisscross. I find going from formula to name is tougher because I have to uncrisscross and then figure out what the charge must have been by looking at the nonmetal to see if the nonmetal works. A little bit of everything here. Then uh, covalent and ionic. So these are worth working through maybe the odd letters or something like that. So what kind of questions could I throw at you on a multiple choice for this stuff? Well, we'll look at the multiple choice section of the study guide, and I'll try and make up some similar questions in a second. What else are you going to need to know? So again, uh, ionic or covalent, name to formula. If you can get that, that's about one-third of the test in terms of mistakes and marks. Okay. What else? Balancing equations. So in terms of the written, there are three equations to balance, and then two like this, where we go from word to skeleton to balancing. I, I put a couple of nast, I put uh, two fairly straightforwards. None of them will balance automatically like on the quiz. Sorry. Uh, and there is, there is at least one pretty nasty on there. Sorry but such is life. So uh, let's instead work our way through this here, okay? 
Ready? We're going to answer these orally as best we can. So what's true of elements in the same period in the periodic table? What's the correct answer there? <coughs> so what does period mean? This is important. So here's what you did. Row. One of those is wrong because this is not a row. This is a column or a family or a group. Row is this way. Okay? Yeah. These are col vertically as columns. Sorry, people at home. This way, what the heck does that mean? Vertically is called a group or a family. There are 18 families. Those are the black numbers on the top of your periodic table. So family 18 is the noble gases. Family 1 is the alkali, no N, metals. Um, what about if they're in the same period? What does that mean? Do they share, first, do they have the same atomic mass? No. I know that's wrong. I would cross that out. They can't react with each other. Oh, no, they can. I would cross that out. They share similar properties? Maybe. They have the same number of energy levels. Ah, yeah, because every period is set up the way it is because that's how many electron shells it has. In period two, you've got two shells, an inner one that's full and an outer shell that can hold up to eight. In period four, you've got one, two, three, four shells, two, eight, eight, and then up to 18. Certainly something like number, oh, uh, number two, I'm going to give you some kind of a Lewis diagram to identify. Uh, what does the Lewis diagram show? The valence shell. So what's the correct answer here for number two? Uh, better yet, here's how I could ask you this as a multiple choice question. I could say there's a mystery element, okay? I'll call it element, I need to use a letter that's not used at all. Suppose there's mystery element A, and I tell you its Lewis diagram looks like this. Which of the following could it possibly be? Could it be Could it be Could it be Or could it be C, B, A, D? First of all, could that be a metal? Well, it could be the sixth metal in row four, maybe. But we're kind of staying out of that row of 18. In the 288 rows, it's probably a non-metal because it's got a nearly full valence shell, assuming that's row period two or row period three. So what has one, two, three, four, five, six? It's got to be six from the left. So which of those is six from the left? Okay. That, that's a way I can give you a Lewis diagram as a multiple choice question. Or, like I did in the study guide, certainly a uh, number of protons that an atom of silver contains you need to know how, how many protons and neutrons and electrons both ions and atoms contain. So here's something like number five. An atom is found to have seven valence electrons. Which family does it belong to? So on your periodic table, which atoms have... Miss Thorarinson, could you please come and see Mike in the office? Sorry, what was that, Matt? Why? There's a reason the periodic table is set up that way. If you, cut, you count across, and then as you get further, although it goes haywire, the reason uh, bromine and iodine and what's AT, astonine, they're in that row because they have seven valence electrons, even though the rules break down further. I'm telling you, they got seven valence electrons. That's why they're in that column. I think I said row. That's why they're in that family or group. Okay. Uh, six, good. So certainly, like number seven, what's the name of this particular compound? Try and do this one in your head. Ionic or covalent? Ionic or covalent? Number seven. 
ionic, multivalent or not? Yeah, so which answer could you cross out right now? B, I would cross out B right now because it's multivalent. I would do that before even trying to do the rest of the question. Now, let's try in our heads, uncrisscrossing. When you uncrisscross, does it work? It does? What is it, Alex? Got to be A. Because the two ends up on the oxygen. Is that okay, Sage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look at number eight. Which answer would I cross out right now? Why? You're right. B would be if it was ionic, and it's not. There's a reason why I said, what's the first thing we have? Ionic or covalent? You can cross off some wrong answers on the provincial as well and on your test. Okay? Uh, hey, what, what is it? Sorry? D. D. I th yeah, again, I find the naming for covalent a little easier because you don't have the whole multivalent thingy. Okay? Uh, certainly something like number nine, what's the correct formula for the compound that has magnesium and phosphate? I expect you to be able to write a compound by crisscrossing. Uh, Ten, which compound has no covalent bonds? Which one has only ionic bonds? Sorry? B, and the reason is the polyatomic ions, although they bond ionically with the metals, they're formed covalently. Number 11, try doing this one in your head. First of all, ionic or covalent? Ionic, because of lead. Lead, multivalent or not? So which two answers could I cross out right now? A and B. You realize by doing that, I've turned it into a true false guessing question. Which, by the way, one of the things I want to teach you this year, because you're writing three provincials and they're mostly multiple choice. This is how you write multiple choice tests. As soon as you know something is wrong, cross it out every time. Okay, you know what? Look at C and look at D. Do they both have the same valence charge for lead? I'm not even going to bother uncrisscrossing. Apparently, all this question is asking is, hey, what's the correct answer? It wants me to clue in that SO3 is a polyatomic ion and has a name called sulfite, not sulfur oxide. Cool. Um, so certainly like number two, you need to know uh, well, when metals form ions, do they gain electrons or lose electrons? Rylan, lose, okay? That, which is why they have positive charges, because electrons are negative. When you lose negatives, you become more what? Positive. Adam walks into a bar and says to the bartender, I've lost an electron. The bartender says to the Adam, are you sure? And the Adam says, why, yes, I'm. Punchline. I'm positive. Okay. Really? A neutron walks into a bar and says to the bartender, how much for a drink? The bartender says, for you, no charge. Right? Okay. Really? I haven't done these ones with you guys yet? Maybe it's only with my science nines. Oh, I'll bring them out sometime. I got a bunch of them. Believe me. You guys with me? Yeah. Good. Shut up. Okay. Something like number three is nice, although this would make a nice chart question as well. I would have no problem giving you in a chart an aluminum atom, an aluminum ion, how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons. First of all, in aluminum atom, how many protons? Thirteen. Okay. How many electrons in an aluminum atom? Too slow. Thirteen. Okay. In an atom, it's the same. When it's an ion, now I got to go look at aluminum. I have to look at its ion charge and I have to think. Why? Because aluminum, does it gain three? It loses three. So instead of 13 electrons, what does it now have? 10. Okay. Uh, a little bit on Bohr diagrams. Uh, this is a kind of a funky way of doing a Bohr diagram. 
certainly, well, it says what does this represent? How many protons does this have? So what element must it be? Oh, really? Is silicon element 14? Okay. Now, how many electrons does it have? Okay, they could have changed the number of electrons and actually given me a silicon ion to pick from here as well. They didn't, but that would... Can you cut it out? Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. You need to know some of the families. So, uh, which of these is in the halogen family? D. Which of these is an element that can be a metalloid, which behaves partly like a metal and partly like a non-metal? C, because that's, and I haven't talked about that much. It's the ones right along the staircase. They sometimes, well, they're semiconductors. They kind of behave like a metal and sometimes behave like a non-metal. A superconductor walks into a bar and says to the bartender, I want a drink. The bartender says, we don't serve superconductors here. The superconductor leaves without resistance. Okay. Number nine. Which one shows an element that doesn't easily gain or lose electrons? The noble gases. Okay. By the way, when I was in high school, it was doesn't lose or gain electrons. But then a guy at UBC managed to force, I think it was xenon, to combine with something. So now we say doesn't easily, but it can be done in a lab with lots of energy and a particle accelerator. You can force it, but it really doesn't want to. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, balancing equations. I want to do a bunch of balancing at the end, so I'm just going to blaze through this. Uh, which norm? So here's another multiple choice. Which name and formula match correctly? Which is the formula for aluminum carbonate? So I'd have to look up carbonate. Aluminum multivalent or not? No. Okay. Carbonate. Which one of these can you? Which two of these can you cross out as wrong right now? What is carbonate? So which ones are wrong right now? I would cross out A and C because they're, oh, you know what? They're trying to see, do I know the difference between carbon and carbonate? I would cross those out. Then I would just crisscross. What's the charge on CO3? On carbonate? Two negative. Two negative? Oh, so is the answer B or D? What's the charge on aluminum? Why? What's the charge on aluminum? Three, so imagine, and I would, do, I would write this out, but I'm trying to push you guys to see if you can visualize it, right? Al3 plus, CO3, uh, two negative, there you go, D. Number three, this is how I can ask a balancing equation question as a multiple choice. I can say, which of the following sets of coefficients will balance this? So let's try this one. You don't need to write it down. We'll just try it together. OK. Uh, by the way, you need to know the term skeleton equation. So this right here is a skeleton equation. I've got the crisscross subscripts correct, but not the coefficients. Let's balance this. Don't write this down. Just watch. You can try this yourself then, too. Hey, how many aluminums on the left-hand side, Alex, right now? How many CLs on the left-hand side? How many Ks on the left-hand side? How many ALs on the right-hand side? Oh, we're balanced. How many CLs on the right-hand side? Don't! How many Ks on the right-hand side? Who wants to talk me through this? I, by the way, this one here is about a C plus, B minus level of difficulty for balancing an equation. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Right, like oh, on the right side. Okay, that's going to change that and that. So, what are the coefficients? What's in front of the first term? It's invisible. A one, then a three, then a three, then a. So it would be that. 
okay? That's how I can ask you, and on the provincial, that's how they'll ask you a multiple choice balancing equation. Or they might simply say, hey, what's the coefficient in front of the KCL? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, four. Okay, gives you an idea. So writing chemical formulas, I'll let you try that. We practice that together, right? What's the first thing you always ask yourself? Ionic or covalent. And then keep an eye out for the multivalent. Keep an eye out for the polyatomic. Covalent, a little easier. Try mono, tetra, uh, penta, and all that. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to do some balancing of equations, but I'm going to try some other ones here. Well, let's try number six. So on the written section of your test, I'm going to give you something like this. I'm going to give you a word equation. Okay. Calcium. What would I write? Plus. Hopefully by now. By the way, when you're writing out an equation for balancing, leave spaces in front of everything for coefficients. So whenever I write a plus sign, I leave a big gap. Becomes. Well, read the whole thing. So it's calcium hydroxide, but I have to crisscross properly. This is probably wrong. And if you write that wrong, you're going to find you can't possibly balance this equation correctly. You might think you have, but it's wrong. So off in the margin, what's the charge on calcium? Please tell me it's not multivalent. 2 plus. What's the charge on OH hydroxide? What is the formula I would write for calcium hydroxide? In brackets, 2. Plus? Nope. Why do I have to write that? Mr. Hofbrinkle. So can you see there's lots of rooms to make sloppy mistakes? And if you get this line wrong, I'm sorry, you can't balance it correctly. So we said we have something called, I'm glad you asked, diatomic molecule, molecules. These are molecules that are so electron hungry that if they're by themselves, they can't exist by themselves. They pair with themselves. And they are Mr. Hoff Brinkle. If you ever have by itself a hydrogen, it's always going to be an H2. If you ever have by itself an oxygen, it's always going to be an O2. It's always going to be an F2. So when you're writing the, the skeleton equation, if they give you as a uh, product or a reactant, one of these guys, if they say plus nitrogen, it's N2. Or if they say plus iodine, I2. Okay? And they're diatomic molecules. They bond with themselves. Is that okay, Alex? Yes. And that's how you can remember. That's, that's an L, by the way. Okay, we got our skeleton. Ooh, how many H's on the right-hand side? Three is incorrect. Six is incorrect. So you ready, Sage? How many here? Take the obvious. Two. How many inside the brackets? What number is sitting right there? One. Well, no, right inside the bracket. One times two is how many here? How many here? How many grand total? Four. four. Nobody said four. Uh, how many O's on the left? One. How many O's on the right? Careful. Not one. Sage, with authority in your voice. Two. Two. OK? Not three. And again, what we're really doing is uh, multiplying those two numbers together, right? But can I get rid of that? Because that really gums up the equation. Who wants to try this one? Sage, you've been doing so good. I'll start with, I'll, I'll pick on you in love. What should we try? Well, in, in, uh, 
which h? I got three different h's in this equation. The H2O molecule? Like putting it like putting it to here? Here? Or here? So you said to the left, is that? Yeah. Putting a two there? Yeah? Okay. Like that? What's that gonna change? How many now? Oh, how many now? And oh we're done. We're done. Right? Check, 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 check. So this one turned out to be not too bad. Okay? But there's going to be some like this on your test. Uh, one about this level, one multivalent and a little tougher. Sorry. Let's go back to the review. I will ask you to do uh, Lewis diagrams. Now, there is a, someone pointed out What's wrong with B if I look at this word right here? So you know what? Just in your mind or on your sheet, cross out the word covalent just molecules. I'm going to ask you to do a Lewis diagram for one uh, covalent and one ionic. Okay? I'm not going to do these two. I'll let you try these two on your own. Instead, uh, how about... Uh, a little tired there, Chief? Um. Well, let's just write it out. Draw a Lewis diagram for, never mind, I don't want to do that one. Let's go S, C, L, 2. What would I call that? How do you know? Oh, okay, covalent sulfur dichloride. If I was drawing this, I say to myself, self, uh, is it ionic or covalent? So no square brackets, no ion chart, nothing of that. Um, which one is there fewer of? Put it in the middle. And then there's going to be a chloride here and a chloride here. Okay. Now, I find it easier now to actually work my way backwards. Instead of saying, uh, how many uh, atoms of sulfur or electrons does sulfur have? I, I, I instead, I focus on the covalent bonds and I look at chlorine. How many extra electrons does chlorine need to be happy? So it's going to form one covalent bond there, and it's going to form one covalent. Each, one, each chlorine is going to form a covalent bond. What do each of those lines count as in terms of number of electrons? Okay, so on sulfur right now, how many electrons does sulfur have grand total with those lines? How many does it want? It normally has six. What, Sage? It wants a full valence shell. How many have I drawn so far? So how many more do I need to draw? One, two, pair, pair. What about chlorine? How many electrons does it have right now, the left-hand chlorine? Two. How many does it want? Eight. So how many more do I need to do? There is a Lewis diagram of, what did you call it? Why didn't you call it monosulfur dichloride? We don't count the mono if we start with a mono. Okay? If the second one is a mono, we put a mono in front of it. Uh, what about a Lewis diagram of something ionic? Like, uh, let's go. Beryllium chloride. Okay. It is ionic. Beryllium is element number five, four. Okay. Um, well, again, put the most common one, sorry, the, the rarest one in the middle. It's going to be a chlorine here 
and a chloride there. It's ionic. Did I say ionic? Yes, I did. So what does beryllium want to do? It wants to get rid of how many electrons? Two. So how many will it have in its outer shell now? So did I say ionic? And what about chlorine? Normally it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But what has each chlorine gained from the beryllium? Oh, each one hasn't gained two. One there. One, you don't have to change colors, but I find it just kind of makes things stand out. So then it's going to be, did I say ion? What we're really saying is, this is called an ionic lattice. What we're saying is if you zoomed in on beryllium chloride and you had the magic electron microscope that could identify atoms, you would see chlorine, beryllium, chlorine, chlorine, beryllium, chlorine. But it's three-dimensional, so it's really tough to visualize. This is still wrong. Three-dimensionally, it's, 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 they're kind of piled around. Okay? So Lewis diagrams. Balancing more equations, we'll come back to that in a second. This is probably about like the uh, level of difficulty I'll ask you for Bohr diagrams. I did on the multiple choice put some Bohr diagrams and it'll be something like if I give you a picture, I expect you to either be able to tell me the element or I might even be able to s expect you to tell me does it want to gain electrons or lose electrons and how many, okay? So. Here's a Lewis diagram, multiple choice. Let me see. We've done a bunch of naming. Uh, da, da, da. So number eight, here's an example again of a multiple choice balancing equation question. Okay. Number nine, in fact, we'll do both of these together because we need balancing equation practice. Okay. But I'm not going to copy the answers. That way you don't know whether the answer is A, B, C, or D. You can still try this for homework on your own. So I'm going to just go like this. Oh. Bal balance clip. I'm going to do eight next, but I know eight is probably going to be tougher. Those carbon, hydrogen, oxygen ones, I find ridiculously tough. I did put a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen one on your test, by the way. Yeah, I totally care. Okay, do this one in your head then, Chief. You want to try doing this without listing everything? Let's see if we can. Okay, you ready? There, there is one atom I notice right away. How many SNs on the right? On the right? By the way, what is SN? What is it? No. Alex, okay, tin. How many tins on the right? Three. So I would probably try that. What has that changed? How many NO2s do I have now? Let's see. How many, I'm gonna treat this like one funky atom. Right now there's four, but with the three in front, how many of them are there? 12. Is that okay? Is that okay, Ryman? Yep. Okay. How many NO2s are there? 12. How many NO2s do I have here? Right? Again, visualize it's really that, but we don't write that. How many do I have here? How many do I have here? I need to do that. What, just, what else just changed? Okay, how many Ks do I have on the left-hand side? Three, how can I fix that? Four. How many PO4s does that give me now on the left? How many PO4s do I have on the right? Okay, in other words, I think we're balanced. Let's double check. Three of these, three of these. No. Well, except this multiple choice question said, what are the coefficients? I'm, the answer would be three, four, 12, one, but yeah. Um, not eight, uh, I'm treating this like one funky atom. So four 
12 of these. One, 12 of these. 12 of these, 12 of these, four of those, four of those. So it can be done without listing everything. Would I do it that way on a test or a quiz? No. Would I try and do it that way in my homework? Yeah. I want to get good at this, right? Let's try the uh, oxidation reaction. The what? This thing. Okay. I know from prior experience, for me, trying to do these ones in my head inevitably ends up in disaster. So I'm going to list. Yeah, maybe this one might not be too bad, actually. I don't know. Let's see. Ah, here's the wrinkle. I'm either going to start with hydrogen or with oxygen. Is oxygen in more than one place on the right-hand side? Yeah. Don't start with it. Hydrogen. Suggestions. Ooh. Come back to, oh, carbon's not balanced either. Ooh. Seven? How many oxygens do I, you know what? Oh, I forgot to write it, thank you. What should go there to get seven on the left? So here's what I do. In my mind, I imagine that. Am I allowed to have a decimal? No. So double everything. Two, seven, four, six, and then see if it works. Let's see. How many carbons do I have on the left-hand side? Walk over. How many carbons on the right-hand side? Four. How many H's? How many hydrogens on the left-hand side? How many H's? How many hydrogens on the right-hand side? I'm smiling so far. How many oxygens do I have? Fourteen. Okay. How many oxygens right here? Eight. How many oxygens right here? Remember what number is sitting right there? Six. I got eight, I got six. How many oxygens do I have? Bada bing, bada boom. No, but the decimal is a, is a good trick. Otherwise, you can be guessing for a while. Is that okay, Sage? Mm -hmm. Summed up? Uh, 10 is wishy washy. Vocabulary you guys are okay on? Hint, look at the crossword puzzle. Also, hint, uh, any bold font word from chapter four, which is how I made up the crossword puzzle. Okay, short answer, I'm gonna ask you to draw a Lewis diagram or two. I'm not gonna ask you to draw a Bohr diagram. Definitely ask you, I'll do this as a chart. I think I give you either the name, in fact, if you look at the first two pages on the study guide, I turned that into one big chart where either I give you the name, here's the formula, or I give you the formula, here's the name. Some covalent, some ionic. And then balancing some more equations. You wanna try 19? Or are you guys okay on balancing? Okay. Now, any other things you wanna ask me about? I'm officially done. It's four o'clock, but I'm willing to stick around. Otherwise, we'll, I'll print this up for you. Is there anything specifically either from the study guide or from the homework or just something, you, uh, Mr. Duick, I'm not sure of, because if you're struggling with it and you guys are here as my Keener students, it probably means some of my other students are struggling with it. You guys are good? Okay, give me one second to pause the video.
good point. So video's back on. Someone has asked, hey, Mr. Duick, what do we have to finish from the study guide? Although I emailed it out on the weekend. You can always check your email on the weekend. What I'm going to be looking for for sure is uh, BLM 2-19 on, where the multiple choice starts. In other words, if you hand this in, it is due uh, for marks. I'll give you like 20 marks or whatever on a Wednesday. I'll flip it open to this, and I'm going to go turn the page, turn the page, looking for writing on each page. However, you notice most of us were struggling with some of this stuff. This is worth doing. But I gave you an awful lot of work. It's about probably about two hours of a study guide. I'm not comfortable giving you that much homework, but you can. Okay?